We're going to look at the British Medical Journal where they looked at multiple diets to see what diet would do the best in this test comparing mortality rates for those who had COVID-19. And we're also going to look at some other health factors that the research shows can actually help us to live a healthier, happier life in the midst of a pandemic. Hey everybody, Chad Caruso here with Health and Homestead. Now nearly 95% of people who have died of COVID-19 had one comorbidity out of several. And so nearly 95% of them. So let's look at some of them right now. This is COVID comorbidities 2021 from the official CDC website. Relative risk of death in the full model was 30% higher in those with obesity, 28% higher with people with anxiety and fear related disorders, 26% higher with diabetes, with complication, 21% higher with chronic kidney disease or CKD, 18% higher with neurodegenerative disorders, including dementia, Alzheimer's disease, 18% higher with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, 17% higher with aplastic anemia, including anemia in CKD, 14% higher with coronary atherosclerosis and other heart disease, and 4% higher with thyroid disorders, including hypothyroidism. But number one was obesity, the greatest comorbidity or the one that was most likely to cause death. But secondarily was people who struggle with fear. And fear can be dealt with in a number of ways, both psychologically and spiritually. We're going to talk about that at the end of the video. Now let's actually look at the British Medical Journal. This is the study here. It is on plant-based diets, pescatarian diet. They also had the standard diet and low-carb diets. And COVID-19 severity, a population-based case control study in six different countries. Research was conducted in six different countries, USA, France, Italy, Germany, UK, and Spain. And they were specifically looking at frontline healthcare workers who had high contact with COVID-19. And those who were on a pescatarian diet, it was found that they had 59% lower chances of having moderate to severe cases of infection, while those on a plant-based diet had 73% lower chance of coming down with a moderate to severe case of COVID-19. What about the most popular diet in America at this time, a low carb diet? It turns out that those who were consuming either a low carb or a high protein diet were nearly four times more likely to have a moderate to severe COVID-19 infection compared to those on a plant-based diet. The low carb or the high protein group had nearly 50% higher chances of having a rough time with COVID than the standard diets of the people in the various countries. So it turns out that a low carb diet is more dangerous than the standard American diet. And I don't think anybody thinks a standard American diet really is a healthy diet. And yet this is more dangerous. And it turns out that it's like we said, four times, nearly four times more likely for someone to have a severe to moderate case of COVID-19 than someone on a plant-based diet. So we're gonna ask the question, why is this? Now, I don't know that we know for sure yet, but there is other historical data that might give us an idea. This is just a potential, let's look at. It. Here's research looking at high fat meals and lung function. Research reported in the European Journal of Applied Physiology reports on the impact of a single high fat meal and lung impairment. Increased amounts of nitric oxide expelled from the lungs is a marker for inflammation of the lungs. Now you've probably heard that nitric oxide in our arteries in our, it can actually dilate our arteries so that we have better blood flow. But it turns out when you expel more nitric oxide when you're breathing, that is a sign of inflammation of the lungs. So what did they find? This study reported an increase in expelled nitric oxide following one high fat meal. They conclude that a high fat meal may contribute to chronic lung problems. One of the factors that causes people to die, obviously, of COVID-19 is lung trouble. And so if even one high fat meal may contribute to lung impairment, we don't know for sure. This is an old study that had nothing to do with COVID-19. But if this is one of the factors, this might be the reason why these high fat diets might be increasing mortality in patients who come down with COVID-19. Now, another factor might have to do with obesity rates. When you look at the number one factor, the number one comorbidity for death with COVID-19 is that someone is obese. 
Now, when you look at this research here, this is not specifically on COVID-19, but this was a study looking at people based on what they ate and their body mass index. Notice what we see. This was one of the Adventist Health Studies. Now, this is a study looking at BMI by food type, and anything in the red zone is considered overweight. Having a BMI of 25 and above is considered overweight, and the average meat eater in this study was 28.8, so they were clearly overweight. The average semi-vegetarian was still overweight at 27.3. The, what they call pesco-vegetarians, I don't know why they call them vegetarians, because fish aren't vegetables, but people who eat fish, their weight dropped down to 26.3. Then you drop down to the lacto-ovo-vegetarian, your average vegetarian is also overweight, but less so than the other people at 25.7. But then you look at people who only eat plant foods, and the average vegan, or you know, plant-based eater is way down to 23.6 on their BMI. So this might be another reason why people on plant-based diets are less likely to die from COVID-19. Now we saw that one of the other factors that was more likely to lead people to death was having atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. And the only diet that has been shown, the only diet to actually be able to reverse heart disease. Now, other diets have been shown to maybe lower your chances of having high blood pressure or maybe even having you know, good markers, but to actually reverse the disease, there's only one diet that has been shown to be able to do that. And that's looking at research from Dr. Esselstein on preventing and reversing heart disease. All subjects had advanced coronary artery disease. Most were acutely suffering from angina, that crippling chest pain. Most had one or more bypass surgeries or angioplasties. And 23 men in, were in the study and one woman, uh, six dropped out, 18 stayed, but they replicated this study with a bunch more people. But nevertheless, they put them on a 10 to 12% fat diet with cholesterol lowering medication for five years. The average cholesterol went from 246 down to 137. And of the 11 participants were, who were able to have angiograms after five years, it was discovered that all of them had stopped any progress of heart disease, all of them and eight participants had 10 to 30% reversal of their heart disease. So this is incredible. There's been three studies that have been done that, sh that show that heart disease can be reversed, and they were all done on plant-based diets. Another disease that's correlated with people dying of COVID-19 is diabetes with complications, as we already saw. And once again, a plant-based diet has been shown to be able to reverse type 2 diabetes. Multiple studies have been done on this. Show a little video clip of uh, Dr. John McDougall, who I interviewed some time ago. Uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of sick fat people in the United States and Europe and other westernized parts of the world. Uh, the problems they have are all the same. They're obese. They get type 2 diabetes. Their arteries are clogged up. As a result, they get heart attacks and strokes. And also their tissues are just sick and cannot respond properly and they degenerate into dietary cancers like prostate and breast and colon cancer. Well, these people have to resort to their innate healing properties if they want to get well. The only way to get well is to fix the problem. The problem's the food. Every day, three, four, five, six times a day, what happens with the typical Westerner or American is they take a fork and spoon and they shovel injury into their body. Now, the body hasn't ceased its efforts to try and be healthy. The body's healing. The arteries are healing. The cancer cells are healing. I mean, healing's going on all the time. And the body's working as hard as it can to heal. It just can't keep pace with the injury from that fork and spoon. And all you have to do is just tap in on the miraculous innate healing properties of the body. There's nothing more to it than the fact that the body heals. You throw it out in the street and get it hit by a truck, and it heals. If you, if you just stop the injury at the dinner table, it heals. The type 2 diabetes goes away 100% of the time. Yes, it does. The obesity resolves 100% of the time. Constipation goes away nearly 100% of the time. The inflammatory arthritis, including rheumatoid arthritis, goes away nearly 100% of the time. The multiple sclerosis stops. I mean, the body just starts working. What happens to cancer? I've seen some amazing things over the years. 
I'm not going to go so far as to say you can cure cancer with a diet, but why not try? What's working now certainly is a disgrace. And Dr. Dean Ornish, MD, shares with us that changing diet and lifestyle, 95% of people can reverse their diabetes. So Dr. John McDougall says 100% of people on a whole food, plant-based diet can reverse their type 2 diabetes. And Dean Ornish says the same thing, but he says 95% of people. So being that this is one of the factors, this may be another reason why plant-based diets have been so effective or so health promoting, at least in people who have COVID-19. Here's another study from British Medical Journal, Nutrition Prevention and Health. And it shows research has revealed that those who are inactive, meaning they exercise zero to 10 minutes a week, are 2.49 times more likely to die of a COVID-19 infection compared with those who exercise 150 minutes or more a week. So exercise seems to be more important. Now notice all of these things are things that you probably want to be doing it just as a part of your lifestyle rather than something you try to do when you get sick. It's better to live a lifestyle of health where you're exercising, you know, drinking adequate amounts of water, eating a a healthy diet. These things are something that if we do over the course of our life, we're much like much less likely to suffer from many chronic diseases. Here's selenium deficiency in COVID-19 deaths. Researchers look looked at a often overlooked mineral that is essential for good health. Researchers looked at different agricultural areas of China that are known to be either adequate in their levels of selenium, deficient in their levels of selenium, or have severe deficiency of selenium. In areas that are selenium sufficient, they have a case fatality rate of 1.17%. The death rate rises only slightly to 1.28% in areas that are moderately deficient, but in areas that are severely deficient, the death rate increases to 3.16%. So what they found is that selenium deficiency, severe selenium deficiency that is, can over double your chances of dying evidently of COVID-19. So this is something to consider. So you might be asking the question, okay, so where do I get selenium? And a great place to find them is in, do you know? It's in Brazil nuts. One Brazil nut has 137% of your daily value of selenium. And so you might be thinking, great, then I'll eat like 30 of them a day. Well, it turns out you can actually, it can hurt you to eat too many of them. But in general, if you're already sufficient on your levels, just one a day, one Brazil nut a day is going to be enough to give you all that you need. Too much selenium can make your hair start falling out. It can cause trouble. So you don't want to overdo your selenium. Many times, if you think one is good, 10 is better, that's not the case when it comes to Brazil nuts. Now, to close with the last thing and that is this fear related the second most likely thing to make you more likely to die of COVID-19 is a fear related disorder we're living in a time where people fear all kinds of things obviously COVID-19 has been something that has caused a lot of fear especially in the beginning but as you begin to have new variants pop up and you're hearing about more people going into the hospital more young people it causes a lot of fear. And so some people are living with fear-related disorders. Are there any things that we can do to help us out to have less fear? There's several things that we can do. Number one, research has shown that exercise, especially cardiovascular exercise, exercise that gets your heart rate up, can make you less likely to have anxious feelings or fear. So that's one very important thing. A very healthy diet can also help people just to be more at peace. They found that more uh, servings of fruits or vegetables in a day will make you a happier person. All the way up to eight servings of fruits or vegetables, that can make you a significantly happier person. One of the ways that has been shown to be able to help a fear of death is CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy. I may do a video about that in the future, but I want to share with you what happened in my wife's life that helped her to overcome the fear of death. But there's also the spiritual component. There's actually a verse here in the book of Hebrews. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, Jesus, also himself likewise took part in the same. He became a human. That through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. 
The Bible says that Jesus came to this earth, he became a human, he lived, went through all the suffering, all the abuse that a human could ever go through. He finally died on a cross that was, in their day, the worst death that they could devise, where you would maybe hang sometimes for days. Now, it didn't take him days, but Jesus hung on that cross and he died, the worst death of his time. And it says that he did this so that he could overcome our fear of death so we wouldn't have to live in fear of death. You know what? Uh, my wife shares an experience how her brother was killed by a drunk driver. After having this happen, she began to think about death a lot. She began to think, maybe I'm going to be next. And this, and this fear went on and on. And there came a time where she went to a, a meeting. And there she was at this meeting. And she was struggling with these fears in her mind. And she was praying about it. God, please, I need you to take this from me. I, I don't want to live my life with fear. I mean, it, it, it's just so overwhelming to live in this horrifying, uh, you know, terrified state. Please help me. And the very next thing that came out was a song that says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know that he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. And she said when she heard that song, it just took the whole burden off of her shoulders. And she felt like I can walk out of this place. If I get hit with a bus, I don't care. He lives and I can face tomorrow. And friends, I want to challenge you that Jesus gave his life, that you may have eternal life, and so that he could set you free from the bondage of fear that controls so many people's lives. So maybe you could find the very same thing in your life, that talking to Jesus, you say, would you help me? Would you set me free from this bondage of fear that I have been struggling with. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, share it with a friend. God bless and have a fantastic day.